Guys, the biggest story is the quarterback <laughs> situation here. All right? We just talked about it. The AFC is loaded. The Browns are 4-3. and three. Their defense will get to the, you know, how good they really are. I think the nonsense about all-time great defense is out the window. Uh, the running game is good enough, I think. We'll see if they do it. But the quarter, P.J. Walker is awful. Think about this. This is how bad P.J. Walker is. That Earl just said, and I said this on my podcast yesterday, well, he played a pretty good game. We thought of yesterday's performance by P.J. Walker good game. as a pretty good game. Look at those statistics. They're awful. Awful. <laughs> we thought it was a pretty good game because he made like five or six nice throws. There's also a fumble in there, which is yeah. not shown on the ground. Three awful. turnovers. Three He's turnovers. Awful. He is awful, you know awful, 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 awful. I just thought of this, yeah. and I'm probably going to get trouble for saying this. It may not be the terrible thing that they lost because they shouldn't be continue to be rewarded for this terrible running this terrible quarterback play out and winning these games. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like against San Francisco, played terrible, won the game. Against Indianapolis, played terrible, won the game. At some point, you need to be held accountable for the decisions that you make and the quarterbacks that you Basically, run out Basically, like there. if the Browns would have won that game, that would have been three in a row, and Andrew Berry would have had the opportunity to sit back and be like, see? Well, I, think I ain't got to go get no quarterback. I think they're going to do that anyway. But they, but. they are, and that's the point I was trying to make last night on the postgame show. Like, the quarterback play is horrible. P.J. Walker is, is not a good quarterback. He's a third-string quarterback, so we shouldn't even have an expectation of him to be a good quarterback. The frustration comes from – We've been told this is what you got. Now go deal with it. And I think some people are the people who are screaming this morning, go fire Kevin Stefanski. You got to give Kevin Stefanski some credit. You know, PJ Walker threw for 248 yards, right? Your, your, your head coach had all week to get your third string quarterback ready. And to me, with that being a decent game and we know it's a bad game, you got to give some kudos because PJ Walker is probably not capable of of throwing for 240 yards, yeah. you know, every single That's about week. as well as he can play. That's Absolutely. about as well as he can play. That's as well as he and, can play. And yes. that was the most passing yards that the Seahawks defense has surrendered since week three of the season. You which know what is, I mean? Which is what I've been saying yeah. since the man got here. He's had the best Baker had his best year under him. Jacoby Brissett had his best year under him. He gets the best out of whatever you give him. He's going to ring out the very best, except for Deshaun. It hasn't worked out yet. But with all these other guys who have been yeah. just average middle-tier quarterbacks – Kevin gets the best out of them. The Browns have had the worst quarterback play in the NFL this year. The worst. It's not close. And yet they're four and three. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. I got a stat to prove exactly what you just said. But before I do that, I need to remind the people out there that FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. And this stat is brought to you by FanDuel. Right now, brand new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks. Winner, if your team wins a simple money line bet, they could be a minus 900 favorite. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets if that $5 bet wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The app is so easy to use. They have player prop spreads, over-unders, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to get in all the action. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook and an official partner of the NFL. So you're where where about are the, the Browns, Browns, by the way, in, in turnover margins? We'll get to that in a sec. Okay. But let me tell you this stat about the yeah. quarterbacks real quick. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is some deep analytics going to make it super simple for you. Yeah. EPA, expected points above average, which is the most basic, bottom line, and CPOE, completion percentage above expected. Two pretty basic analytics. When you combine it together, you get a composite score, and this is pretty telling. There are 35 quarterbacks in the NFL that qualify with enough passes thrown. Steve, you can take this graphic full. Of the 35 quarterbacks... Take a look at this. Mac Jones is 31st with a combined composite score of 0.23. Josh Dobbs, who we'll see this weekend. Yeah, he stinks too. 32nd in the NFL, 0.18. Yeah. Kenny Pickett has not been good this year. 0.009. Zach uh, Wilson, also terrible with a 0.04. And look at that. There's number 35, dead last. P.J. Yeah. Walker with a minus. The only quarterback with a minus composite CPOE plus EPA in the league of a 0.42. On the negative side. Now, where is Deshaun Watson? Does not actually qualify. Oh. Where would he be, do you know? I could look it up, but I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, yeah, I mean, it just says it all. <laughs> I mean, and the, It doesn't get worse than that. The, and the it's Browns, not even close between him and Zach Wilson. The Browns have turned the ball over at an alarming rate. Seven uh, turnovers in the fourth quarter. 
seven. They're four and three, averaging a turnover per game in the fourth quarter. Seven turnovers in the fourth quarter. That leads the league. I was trying to run something real quick before the show, and I couldn't get it to work. But yeah. according to our data, seven turnovers in the fourth quarter tied with, I think, the Bears for the most in the NFL for fourth quarter turnovers. There you go. T- the tur- their turnover differential is minus seven. That's 31st in the league. You're supposed to be two and five. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. At best. And that, I mean, you know, we could sit here. They should be, I could make an easy argument that they'd be five and two. I can make an easy argument that they'd be two and five. So four and three is probably about what they should yeah. be. It's just, I, I go back to what Andrew Berry said uh, during this press conference during the bye week. You know, and he talked about the number one priority going forward for this football team was protecting the football and not turning it over. Right. And yet, that's an issue that still has not been corrected. Well, and, yeah. And, and, and it's mostly been inter- It's mostly been by the quarterback. Yeah. Obviously. Whether it, yeah. It's fumbles by the quarterback, no matter yeah. who's back there. Interceptions by the quarterback, no matter who's back there. Right. It's frustrating. You can't win games when you when you turn the ball over real quick, right. boy. You know. The running game and the defense. In my opinion, the Browns have a defense and a running game that travels. The Browns ran the ball 40 times yesterday for 155 yards and 3.9 yards a carry. The That's Browns, not good. Yeah, but just, just hear me out. Yeah. You still rank top three as far as rush yards a game. That doesn't mean out. The Browns, the Browns yeah. defense, I think, no, it's not all-time great, but it's yeah. still a pretty damn good defense. The whole point to my argument is the Browns got two units that in the NFL historically they travel. A good run game and a good defense. And it's so frustrating that we don't get competent quarterback play that would kind of help even everything out. Yeah. It's, it's frustrating as hell that this is what we had to deal with all season long. There's no, there's no excuse in my mind. And Jason, why, why do you think the Browns are not going to trade for a quarterback? I have no logical explanation. Because the, the, Jacoby Brissett makes a lot of sense. I don't know if there's anyone outside of him. To me, it's Brissett. Like, it, it, we talked about it last week. He fits on the cap. Yeah. He fits with, what uh, le- theoretically, what you would have to give up. And he knows the system enough to where he could be a plug-and-play guy. Now, he hasn't taken a snap since August of yeah. importance. So, you, that's something to factor in. But there's just – there's no other great options out there. So, it's it's either Jacoby or Stickley, which you got, I, I guess. I, again, but, I, I think still think Andy Dalton makes some sense, too. But he doesn't know the system and how long is it going to take him to get up to he's speed. He's a veteran quarterback. He play, he's played a game this year. He's not going to play Sunday. Jacoby Brissett, you can trade for him today, and he plays Sunday. Has Andy Dalton ever played in a system similar to what Kevin Stefanski I, runs? I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't. And the only reason I ask that is because, yeah, I want another quarterback too. Yeah. But then the other side of it is like, okay, who can you bring in here that will be ready to play right there yeah, I don't, outside I, of Jacoby Brissett or Andy Josh Dodd? Is, is a veteran quarterback played a ton of games. I don't think it's – this is not rocket science. It's football. Well, you know, I mean, come on. Here's, here's and the by bu- the way, you could you could survive. Like, the, the Cardinals at home, even with P.J. Walker, they should be able to win sure. that game. Yeah, they should. But and, and the, it comes back to Deshaun. And if, if Deshaun is out for an extended period of time and you can fill in the blank on what that number is, it doesn't matter. You're screwed. We said it all summer long. And it, it feels like we're trying to move the goalpost on and out. Everybody said it all summer. If Deshaun goes down, it's over. Right. Well, guess what? Deshaun went down. And now it, it's, this, it's this ambiguous injury of no one really knows when he's going to be back. So you're trying to hold the boat together until he comes back. And then you hope that he plays like he did against Tennessee and not in all the other games before it when he does. It's a really difficult spot to be in. So the only reason to, to me that you don't make a trade is because you just feel like Deshaun's going to be out a really long time, and it doesn't matter because I said it last week. If you trade him for Jacoby Brissett, it's to address the wound. You're not trying to you're not trying to amputate an arm and attach a new one. You're just trying to but get through the next couple of it's triage for the next couple of weeks. But if they thought he was going to be out for the season, why wouldn't they put him on IR? Well, and they and Pam Oliver said before the game that hasn't been ruled out. That was news to me because it, that that had never really been discussed I, before. I mean, this this idea that even if Deshaun listen. Um, their defense is not playing as well as it was earlier in the season. Still a good defense. It's still a, good, still defense, a good defense, but right? it's not this they historical. They got a decent running game. And average. The running game. Yeah, I, I don't decent. know why suddenly we're thinking that their running game is. Well, because they have total yards. It's just because they run a lot. But, you know. It's very average. It's, it's, you think so? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I agree with Without you. Without Nick, it's. it's and and, I'll get, and I'll, average is better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be worse than average. Yeah. So, it's better than I thought, but it's still very average. But the point is, like. The AFC is very topsy turvy. I, I mean, nobody looks that great. The teams look great. Like the Bengals this week 
look like the best team in the AFC. But that's one week. Right. I don't know. Is that what they're going to be the rest of the season? Miami looked because like the best, league, best team in the league a couple weeks ago. Right. And then this week they didn't. Right. The Chiefs. The Chiefs. Got boat raced. I, wasn't it his like, first loss to the Broncos or something like that? I believe yeah. so. So, nobody's perfect. And defense has seemed early in the season to be catching up with offense a little bit. I'm still not sold that that's the case and that in the second half of the year it won't be different like it was last year. But... Maybe, you know, so even if it is Jacoby Brissett, yes, ultimately, whether it's a P.J. Walker, Jacoby Brissett, Andy Dalton, you're not winning in the playoffs with those Correct. guys. Correct. Bottom line. Correct. You ain't go, you're not going to the Super Bowl with, with Jacoby Brissett. Anybody being realistic understands that. Yes. Um, but if you could, if the, let's say Deshaun Watson, you could sit him for, let, you, you, you shut him out, shut him down until there's three weeks to go in the season. I think with Jacoby Brissett and the rest of the team, you could make the playoffs. I don't think they can with P.J. Walker. I think that's the difference. Yeah, I mean... I think the difference between Brissett and Walker might be a game or even two. And that could be enough to get absolutely. him the playoffs. I mean, maybe they win yesterday with Jacoby. I don't, I don't I know. I think they probably would have. Maybe they do. We'll never know, obviously. Yeah. But I do think Jacoby's an upgrade over P.J. To what extent... You know, I don't think Jacoby Brissett is the great savior of Cleveland Browns football this year. Of course year. not. No. Not by any means. No. But you're just trying to minimize the damage, and that's why I thought the move would have been made last week. Once yeah. Deshaun went down again, once you shut him down again, that's when you say, okay, we have to go do better than this. Right. It's not – you can fumble through one or two weeks with, with P.J. Walker, and it goes – it's sort of like the argument I made with Garoppolo last year. You can fumble through four or five games at Jacoby Brissett, but when you're talking about 11, you better go do better than that. Well, you can fumble through one or two games with P.J. Walker, but if you're talking four or five or six, you better go do better than that. And that Jacoby is that, to me, is that sweet spot of four, yeah. five, six games. Anything more than that, and you're really exposed so to So what is the downside to acquiring Jacoby Brissett? Well, either Washington doesn't want to play ball, which is unfair to Jacoby because it's an opportunity for him to go start. Right, and I doubt or, that's the case. Or they're asking too much. For, I mean, this is a backup quarterback that hadn't thrown a meaningful pass all year. I don't see how the price could be anything higher than what the Browns got for Dobbs, that fifth round pick. Uh, I think I could see it being a little higher because Brissett's better. Uh, he hasn't thrown a pass all year. Like okay, fourth round pick, I'd give up. A fourth they don't round have pick. a four. That's part of the problem. They lo- they they lost their four to the Deshaun trade. So that's where yeah. maybe things get a little bit sticky. Mm. But and uh, and. Every dollar counts. We've talked about it with the yeah. cap and with the rollover and everything. And it's not about Jimmy spending money. It has nothing to do with that. It's about trying to fit everything under the cap next year and the year after and the year after. That's fine, but the percent is not going to affect it that much. Agree. Yeah. Every dollar counts, but percent at this point is probably around a million and a half or so. Yeah. I mean, so, it, But uh, also, you have really limited resources here and what you can do in trade and with cap and everything else. And if they've identified another spot that they think is more critical, I don't know what could be more critical than the quarterback. <laughs> None. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, you know, we heard, I think Diana Rossini from, from our place said yeah. last week they were going to look at a receiver. Okay, well, I still I stand by what I said last week. I don't know how you can evaluate this receiver group when you've got these guys throwing to them that they have thrown to them. You yeah, what is fix the point the of getting spot. a receiver if you don't if you, have a If you have P.J. Walker throwing it to them. Yeah, that, that makes no sense. Yeah, so to me, you have to address the quarterback spot. I just, I just, I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think so either. Like Mike asked that question yesterday. I said zero percent that the Cleveland Browns addressed the quarterback, uh, backup quarterback position before I don't the trade deadline. Zero percent. When Jason said what he said last week, right? We live in two worlds sometimes. The, uh, we live on one part of me. You know, we hope and wish Andrew Barry do this, but then once you get uh, information from a few different sources, you got to come to the reality side of things. They're not calling Washington to trade for Jacoby Brissett. And by all accounts, it looks like, okay, this is what we stuck with. Yeah. We stuck with P.J. Walker and we stuck with, like, DTR. It's frustrating as hell because, you know, I view Andrew Berry smarter than that. I view him as a man that's more prepared than that. And up until this point, anytime that there was an issue with any point uh, or any, you know, roster on his position on his team, when it comes to the roster, Mm -hmm. you know, he kind of did a good job of addressing it swiftly. And it seems like when it comes to this quarterback position – it's like, you know, you want to be timid. You don't want to go out there and do what you know is necessary. It's necessary. You're wasting a good defense. I think you're wasting a, a run game that's even without Nick Chubb proven to at least be average. And average is good enough to still be able to give you some success. So, yeah, it's very frustrating to know for a fact that we got to continue to deal with P.J. Walker or DTR until Deshaun Watson comes back. And then even when Deshaun Watson comes back, we don't even know how 
like effective he, yeah, he could be on the team. It. They're not going to trust. And so it. like it, it's, it's just frustrating all the way around the board. One thing, one bit of news on the Guardians here, real quick, before we continue with our Browns conversation. Zach Meisel of the Athletic reports that Craig Council is in Cleveland today to meet with the Guardians about their managerial opening. League sources tell him and Will Salmon also of the uh, of the Athletic. So Craig Council, who was my top choice to be the Guardians' new manager in Cleveland, he's probably using the Guardians for leverage with the Brewers or Mets. But uh, yeah, I don't see it. But we'll Let see. me ask I you guys like a question, that. real yeah. quick. In a hypothetical world, the Browns do not make a trade by tomorrow's deadline, by Tuesday's deadline, Bull, by the October 31st <laughs> deadline, just tomorrow. to make sure we cover yes, all. Yes, yes. By Halloween's deadline. I don't know where deadline. the lunar eclipse and the moon is, but yeah. by tomorrow's deadline at 4 yeah. p.m., which means either Deshaun, PJ, or DTR. Let's say Deshaun needs one more week to heal up his shoulder. Would you start DTR against Arizona, or would you roll out PJ Walker one more time? I'll say, now listen, I'm not in <laughs> practice, so I don't know what he looks like there. I would, from the outside looking in, I would, I would give DTR a shot because PJ Walker's played three games. He's been awful. Now DTR was awful in his first game, but he wasn't. You know, like his, he's a rookie. Got kind of thrown in there at the last second. I think that was a tough spot. This is a great spot. It's home against Arizona. So if Watson can't go now, if DTR has been a disaster in practice, then I wouldn't do it. But I don't know that if he's looked like he's been improving. I would give him a shot. Jason? Here's why I stick with PJ, even though we just got done yeah. <clears throat> just lambasting the poor man. You can't you can't keep this conga line at quarterback. And, okay, so you want to play DTR against the Cardinals, fine. Well, then you're going on the road to Baltimore. That just absolutely dismantled DTR the last time he was out there. So you really want to put him back in that environment. I would like to see him get another shot. If Deshaun's really going to be out for an extended period of time, I would like to see Dorian get another chance at this. And Arizona makes sense, but then what are you going to do? Then you're going to stick with him in a Lions den in Baltimore? I, I would if he played, you know, I mean, what, you got to try something. Yes. I can't keep this guy. But but they're one bad throw away from winning again with P.J. Walker. I hear you. But and then we're not having this conversation at all. P.J. Walker in his career in the NFL, six touchdowns, 18 turnovers. I know. I mean, this is insane. I, I know. I agree. But 18. What is he just with the Browns this year? Just this season. Yeah, I know he has two fumbles lost. If you go to 14A, Steve, he has six turnovers. Yeah. Or six turnovers, yes. And Steve one will pull it up here. He has the one touchdown pass. To this and week. no rushing touchdowns. No rushing touchdowns. Five interceptions. Five interceptions. I thought he had two, two fumbles, fumbles lost. Two fumbles. So yes. seven, seven turnovers. One touchdown and seven, seven turn- turnovers. That's there, crazy. And under a 50% completion percentage. You really cannot play worse. I don't think it's possible. But you also, you have, if you still believe Dorian is your long-term investment as right. the backup, his first experience was awful. Yeah. And I think you want to set him up for success. And Arizona does sound like setting him yes. up for success. But then you've got Baltimore and Pittsburgh, and those are games you've got to have. You've well, got to have this. those games. What if you think, what if you think right now, and girl, I'm going to get your take on DTR in one second. But what if you think that Watson can be back for Baltimore? If the Browns think Watson can be back for Baltimore, are you more likely to stick with P.J. Walker for one more week or say, let's get Dorian Thompson-Robinson feeling good against one of the worst teams in the league in Arizona, and then we go back to Watson? It's, it, it's, I think I would still stick with P.J. because this looks like a, this is a win on the schedule, right? Like if you see a dollar on the ground, bend over and pick it up. And if P.J. Walker can beat the Niners, he can beat the Colts despite playing as terrible as he does. Yeah. I would rather just bend over and pick up the dollar. Mm-hmm. If I know Deshaun's coming back against Baltimore, just bend over and pick up the dollar. Don't try and get cute. And <clears throat> if, it, if it's a wreck with Dorian again, if he's a disaster again, and you go got to go back to PJ. Yeah. You, like, the practice reps are really, really important. And I tried to make that point last week. And we saw it. Like, PJ, he wasn't good yesterday, but he was better than he was the week before. Why? Well, he had all the practice reps last week. And now if you keep stacking those practice reps and you give them those starters practice reps again this week, now, if, you know, if you want to throw Dorian in there and now you're starting him off with just one week of practice reps, at least with PJ, right. you're building That's consistency fair. with practice reps. You're giving him the same looks. You're giving him the opportunity to build on the week before and the week before. Neither situation is ideal by any means. And I know I'm kind of talking out both sides of my mouth because I do want to get another look at, at Dorian Thompson Robinson. I want to see what he's got. But with you're trying to make the playoffs right now, and there's jobs on the line, and you got two huge games looming after this one, and I don't know that anyone can say with any sort of certainty right now when Deshaun's going to be back. I think for me, I look at it like this. 
the two the two quarterbacks that's in this room that we know are going to be here is Deshaun Watson and DTR. I honestly wanted to see DTR get another shot the very next week versus San Francisco. The reason being, when you're going up against a defense like that, even if you don't play your best, it's only up from here. There's so many lessons to learn for a quarterback that's have to, that have to go up against that type of defense. I felt like even if the performance wasn't that great, he could have learned from it and got better. But to me, boy, what they did was, I feel like you kind of like shook his confidence. You know what I mean? The first time you go out there and you do something for the very first time and you don't do it right, and then they snatch it away from you, and then they don't want to give it back to you, now he might be in his head questioning, well, damn, can I do this job for real? Or yeah. damn, I thought y'all had my back. He went from quarterback two to quarterback three just like that, and we ain't heard much else from him. Um, I would so would you put him in this week? No, no, no at, this point. no, at this point, because I feel like you had your opportunity, right. you know, to get him ready weeks ago. And now at this point, if you put him in there, you're taking reps away from PJ Walker. And he's had the majority of the reps outside of Deshaun Watson for the last three weeks. Last week, he just got a full week of practice. Pretty sure he'll get a full week of practice again this week. You know, I just felt like if you was going to see what DTR had again, you had the opportunity to do that the very next week. Instead, you snatched it away from him and it, in my mind, I think you did more to hurt him versus help him by doing that. Now, we fast forward to where we are right now. You absolutely need to go out here and beat the Arizona Cardinals. And for as horrible as the situation is, P.J. Walker probably gives you the best opportunity to go out here and beat the Arizona Cardinals. I know that sounds crazy to say that, but that's how I feel. And so going forward, you know, it just feels like this is what we have. And we just going to have to stick it out with P.J. until Deshaun Watson comes back. Um, the bra I, I, this is untenable. This is frustrating, and I bet the I, 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 fans have to be losing their minds right now. That PJ like PJ Walker probably shouldn't be in the NFL. That's how bad he is. He's a practice squad emergency third string quarterback at best. Yeah, at best, and. By the way, Josh Dobbs, you know, for all the criticism, Josh Dobbs sucks. Yeah. He's not any good either. All right? Nice guy. Better than P.J. Walker, probably. But he's also terrible. And he's also way worse than Jacoby Brissett. And everybody wanted Jaco Everybody wanted Josh Dobbs last year. And everybody wanted uh, DTR. We were all, everybody was all excited. And now the, but now you have to do something. And I, I'm not buying. I'm not accepting that they're going to do nothing here in the next 20. And it doesn't even have to be in the next 20-something hours because in theory you could have signed a free agent. I think, Jason, there's no excuses to me. I don't want to hear it. If, if the Browns don't make the playoffs, I, you know, I, I had Barry and Stefanski together. Mm -hmm. But right now, like if, I, if you said to me, well, you got you to fire one of them. To me, it's no doubt I'm firing Barry before I'm firing Stefanski right now. Now, I wouldn't fire either of them right now. Right. But if I had to choose, to me, I'm not firing Stefanski. I mean, he lost Jack Conklin. He lost Nick Chubb. He lost his quarterback, and they're 4-3. and three. I mean, That's what else right. do you want from them? That's right. Now, listen, other teams are dealing with injuries, too. Sure, but those are franchise pillar. Well, not Conklin, but yeah, Nick yeah. Chubb and Deshaun Watson is your entire offense. I agree with both of y'all. But the reality is, if somebody's going to get fired, it will be, Kevin, be Kevin Stefanski. It'll be Kevin. I don't think, think Kevin's going to get fired I, I, before I, Barry. I don't think Andrew, I think Andrew Barry won't get fired this year at all, no matter what. I, I, I listen, really believe there's that. There's no excuse for the state the state of the Browns' quarterbacks. I agree with right you. Now. No excuse. He has to go get somebody. Well, if is, if they don't get anyone, yeah. and they miss the playoffs, maybe we have that conversation. Yeah. But I, I, I go. I just go back. It really comes down to. Deshaun and the, the it's the ambiguity of this injury mm -hmm. that I think is what's so frustrating. I said it last week. If he blew out his knee and he was out for the year, you can have a much different conversation maybe than where we're at now. But it's this when's he coming back? No one really knows. How long's he out? How long do we have to hold the boat together? And it's the uncertainty of it all. Well, that, plus Jason, as part of what you're saying, sorry to cut you off, but I feel like we've had six different uh, breakdowns of what his injury is. It's, it's none of it has crazy. made sense. None of it has made sense. Go back to the very beginning. Yeah. He says he's going to play. He says all week he's going to play. Everyone thinks he's going to play. He doesn't play. And then he comes back and he looks like he's throwing a medicine ball in the mm -hmm. game against the Colts. Clearly wasn't ready to play. So none of the messaging is lined up. None of this is really making sense. And that's only adding to sort of the, the haze over the whole thing. But again, 
We said it all summer. If Deshaun goes down, the season goes down. Well, that's what's happened. And they're still somehow holding this together. Flow. Somehow they still They're flow. still holding this thing together. But we said all summer long, if the quarterback goes down, the season goes down. Yeah. And the quarterback went down. You know, he was asked uh, when he addressed the media this past week, you know, about the four to six time frame that he told people. And he said, basically, you know, I'm just giving y'all the basic information based off the research that I've done. Right. You know what I mean? But he also followed that up with, you know, that was just the basic. I don't know how long I'll be out. I'm not sure when I'll be back. And the fact that the quarterback said itself, I'm not sure, that's more than enough reason for Andrew Barry to go make a move. Boy, I'm with you. Yeah. I think he should go make a move. But I'm telling you, I don't think that he will. Why? Who the hell knows? Because you cannot look at this team. You cannot look at the AFC and see where the Browns are and be like, okay, I'm just going to sick back with what I have. The so Browns are still right here in the thick of things, right? And like, if you're not going They're to get a playoff team as of you, today, exactly. If you're not going to get them a quarterback, then you're wasting the efforts of every other unit on this team, and then you're making it harder and harder to evaluate your head coach. Everybody scream, you know, scream and fire Kevin Stefanski. Kevin Stefanski got his issues, but I don't think his issues warrants him to be fired. That's just my opinion. And it's hard to scream that when your general manager is not giving you a competent backup quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't take, honestly, right now, anybody saying Kevin Stavansky should be fired, I can't take it seriously. I mean, I can't. That's, a, that's it's ludicrous. It's absurd. <clears throat> but here's, I guess, one that we haven't discussed. Yeah. Why you go make a move at quarterback. And I talked about this with the running backs. The players, right? Absolutely. Yes. You got a locker room full of veterans, and they're looking at you like, what are you going to do about this? Yes. And there are a lot of guys that I, I think you could lose these guys mm -hmm. yeah. if you don't do anything. And that's that is a real concern that I think that they need to that they need Absol to consider and discuss. I think that's a hundred percent true because the veterans on this team, the guys who have suffered through all the losing here, guys like Petonio, guys like Miles Garrett, yeah. who had a big sack late in the game, like they got to be thinking, like, okay, come on now, just give us, just give us competent play. Give us play. a chance. Here we go again. That's give us a chance. Here, here, right? here we go again. Yeah. Go get you, like they got to all be thinking about Jacoby. Have you asked any of the players about Jacoby? Not specifically, and I don't know, even off the record, I don't yeah. know that they would really go there. Okay. Because I think that But they, they all love Jacoby. Oh, they did. Yeah, they did. They would love But, but they, they loved him. But they know who he is. But they know his limitations. Right. But they know he's better than B.J. Walker. Yes. And he probably gives them a better chance to Jacoby win. Jacoby Brissett is a legit top-of-the-line backup quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe even as high as bottom-of-the-barrel starting Absolutely. quarterback. Absolutely, yes. He is somewhere between the... 25th 28th and, and 33 quarterback. Let me, ask you, right. let me yeah. ask you a question because, you know, I've been screaming the same thing. Go yeah. get Jacoby Brissett. And the, the rebuttal has been with Earl. Why would the Washington Commanders play ball? Jason, you told us that, to your knowledge, as of Friday, the Browns hadn't even made a call. Had not called. Let's say hypothetically the Browns do call. What would be the reason why the Commanders would tell the Browns no? I don't know if they would tell them no. I think that they would just try and hold him hostage for a higher price than what he's right. really worth. And that could be part of the issue here. I mean, it every could. other team knows how bad a shape the Browns quarterback sure. situation is. Sure. And they're going to hold him up for a higher pick. Which is why I reached out to Diana and said, hey, check with Washington and yeah. see if they've even made the call. Yeah. And Diana got back to me within five minutes. She said, I already, I had already checked and they hadn't made the is, call. Is, now, is, that was as of last Wednesday. Things I could change. It things, yeah. it's, all it takes is five minutes for that yeah. to change. Either one of you ever heard the term, you plan in my face? No. no. So uh, you hear it a lot from women when it comes to the relationships with, that they are with, in with me and when things is kind of rocky. They say, you playing in my face. Like, to me, that's what the Cleveland Browns are doing. The Browns right now are playing in our face, and we so stupid that we keep allowing them to play in our <laughs> face, right? You yeah, see where well. the Browns are right now in stance of the AFC. You see where, what you got with this team. You got a defense that's pretty damn good, top 10 defense. Yep. You got a run game that's based on yards per game. It's still a top five rushing attack, and yet your general manager is looking at this quarterback situation and trying to convince you that this is good enough to get by. Yeah. Trying to convince you that this is good enough in a wide open AFC that will help you have whatever success that you're going to have until Deshaun Watson comes back. And you got a portion of the fan base who's believing it, and you got a portion of the fan base that's saying, "Man, you out your damn mind." Yeah, I let. I think the bottom line is they need to add at the position. Will they? I feel like we all we're yeah. all in agreement. Yeah, that yeah. PJ I mean, Walker everybody, is unsustainable with what he's doing. It's like playing with fire. I the mean, last two weeks, the Browns against right. Indian San Francisco, 
had played with fire and got out unscathed. Yeah. And this, this week, week they played happen. with fire and they got burnt. And it as Jason said, the players know this. The players, yes. the veterans, they're like, you have to give us a chance. We can do it. Uh, I want to switch gears to the running game because we've alluded to it a little bit. Mike, can you, do you have some analytics on where the Browns running game ranks? Uh, I'll do a read. I'll look because into it. Because rushing yards per game to me is not a good stat. I mean, yards per per attempt is better, but even that's a little flawed. I had a... Uh... I, I pulled up a couple scatter charts over the weekend. Yeah, um, where they were real close to league average. Yeah, I feel like the Browns have a league are middle of the road in running game, and and some of that credit goes to the to the the offensive offensive line. line thank yeah. you. Hey, the average but is better than I thought they were going to be way when Nick better. went down. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, just real quick that. before we continue moving on here with the running. Yeah. 